अ नेशनल हीरो अ वॉर हीरो अ पद्म विभूषण अ पद्म भूषण एंड द फर्स्ट फील्ड मार्शल दिस मैन वॉज इंस्ट्रूमेंटल इन क्रिएशन ऑफ बांग्लादेश एंड ही स्ट्रक्चर्ड वन ऑफ द बिगेस्ट सरेंडर्स ऑफ द पाकिस्तान आर्मी एंड एनिग्मा एंड अ पर्सनैलिटी बाय हूम द इंडियन आर्मी स्टिल स्वेज सैम बहादुर Field Marshal Sam Hormuz ji Ram ji Jamshed ji Manak Shah was born on 3rd April 1914 to Hormuz Manak Shah and Hila in the town of Amritsar he was the fifth sibling of six brothers and sisters they were Fali Sila Jan Sheru Sam and Jami they were four sons and two daughters the two daughters became teachers and the two elder sons went abroad for studying engineering and jami like his elder brother joined the medical corps as a doctor and retired as a two star admiral and manak shah had many a first he was the first field marshal of the indian army the first officer to join the gorkha rifles and also he was one of the first officers to be taken into the indian military academy manak shah's father also served in the medical corps in the british indian medical services as a boy manak shah was mischievous and high spirited his early ambition was to study medicine and become a doctor like his father he completed his primary school in punjab and then went to sherwood college nainital in 1929 he left the college at the age of 15 with his junior cambridge certificate and english language curriculum developed by the university of cambridge international examinations in 1931 he passed the senior cambridge with distinction manak shah then asked his father to send him to london to study medicine like his elder brothers but his father refused saying that he was already supporting two of the brothers and manak shah entered the hindu sabha college and sat in the exams and passed with the third division in science to show his rebellious attitude he sat down for the written exam for the indian military academy which was idealized by field marshal sir philip chetwood and he was one of the 15 who was selected for the indian military academy and his training started in october 32 and he was on 1st february 1935 he was commissioned as a second lieutenant with an anti date seniority from february 4th 1934 he was commissioned into the second battalion royal scots which was stationed at lahore he was already fluent in punjabi hindi urdu english and his parental language of gujarati he also qualified the highest standards for army interpretership in pashto he saw action in burma in 1942 during the second world war he served in the sitang valley area with the 4th battalion 12th frontier force regiment and this regiment was given the task to capture the pagoda hill which was a key feature in that area he led his company for the counter attack against the attacking imperial army of the japanese his company had about 50% casualties and the morale of the company was low at that time manak shah led from the front and he was grievously wounded 
he took about seven bullets in his stomach and his lungs were also damaged. Major General David Cohen, the General Officer Commanding of the 17th Infantry Division, rushed up to him and took off his military cross and pinned it onto his chest, saying that the military cross cannot be awarded to a dead soldier. And his citation was written later on and he was awarded the military cross for bravery. He was evacuated by his buddy and when he was taken to the Australian doctor, he refused to treat him because his chances of survival were very thin. When the doctor asked him, what happened to you? He said, I had stood behind a mule and got kicked. That is how I am injured. Seeing his humorous qualities, the doctor treated him and he was in his service to be what he is today. Then having recovered from his wounds, Maneksha attended the 8th staff course at the Command and Staff College in Quetta between 23rd August to December 1943. On completion, he was posted as the Brigade Major to the Razmag Brigade and he served there until October 1944. Then he joined the 9th Battalion 12th Frontier Force Regiment. Thereafter, he received the local rank of Lieutenant Colonel and he was instrumental in supervising the disarmament of over 60,000 Japanese prisoners of war after the Japs lost the World War II and surrendered. He and handled this so well that there was no cases of indiscipline or escape attempts from the camp. For this, thereafter, he was sent on a six-month lecture tour of Australia and thereafter, from his return from Australia, he was posted as a grade one staff officer in the military operations directorate. Post-independence, his battalion, the 12th Frontier Force, was be to become part of the Pakistani Army. Therefore, he was shifted over to 3rd Battalion of the 5th Kurfa Rifles and was one of the first officers to be commissioned there. And he was slated to take over command. But then the Kashmir debacle happened in 1947-48 when the Mujahids entered Kashmir and Hari Singh acceded to India. He accompanied Menon as a GSO-1 to Kashmir and he suggested that Indian Army may please be launched into Kashmir to fight back the Mujahids and assist Hari Singh. As the battle of 1947-48 in Kashmir took place, his posting as the commanding officer of his regiment was cancelled and his tenure in the Directorate of Military Operations was extended and he carried on there supervising the operations in the valley. Then happened Operation Polo that is the annexation of Hyderabad and this also caused his further extension in the Directorate of Military Operations and he was given the acting rank of a colonel and then to the rank of brigadier and he was designated as the first director of military operations which in April 1952 Manaksha was appointed as the commander of 167 infantry brigade stationed at Ferozpur and thereafter in April 1954 he was shifted out and appointed as the director of military training at army headquarters. He was instrumental in writing of lot of papers and presses for tactics and other related military subjects. Thereafter, in 1957, he was sent to the Imperial Defence College at London 
to attend the higher command course for one year. On his return, he was appointed as the General Officer Commanding of the 26th Infantry Division and was given the acting rank of a Major General. And while he was commanding the division, the Chief of Army Staff General K. S. Thimaya and the Defence Minister Krishna Menon visited his division. At that time, Menon asked Manak Shah about his opinion of Thimaya. To this, Manak Shah bluntly replied, Dear Minister Sir, please do not ask opinion about my superior officers because later on you may be asking the same about me from the colonels and brigadiers who was my juniors and working under me. This doesn't breed well in the army. Menon was taken aback. He did not like the reply and said that if he wanted, he could sack Thimaya. But to this, Manekshaw replied that if you sack my chief, I'll get somebody else as a chief again. Then in March 1959, Manekshaw was posted as the commandant of the Defence Staff Services College at Wellington. There he was caught up in a controversy which could have ended his career. After Thimaya resigned and Thapar was appointed as the next Chief of Army Staff, one Lieutenant General Prij Mohan Kaul, who was very close to the Nehru family, was promoted to Lieutenant General and appointed as the Corps Commander of the 4th Corps at Tejpur. Though he was an services officer, he was given command of a fighting formation. There were a lot of discontentments amongst the officers for this appointment and promotion. And Maneksha also made some derogatory statements which were taken against him and called when he was appointed as the Chief of Journal Staff despite the Chief and other senior officers objecting to it. Call took Malik Shah's derogatory statements personally and a court of inquiry was ordered against him. But Jal Dalat Singh, whose integrity was beyond comparison, gave him a no case and acquitted in the inquiry. But because of the inquiry being on, Manak Shah could not take part during the 1962 Indochina war. And you know that it was a debacle and call and Menon were blamed for it and both were sacked. At this, Nehru called up Manak Shah and appointed him the Corps Commander for the 4th Corps at Tejpur, which was vacated on the sacking of Call. And on his fourth day of command, Manak Shah and Indra Gandhi visited his corps. During this, Manak Shah said that he would like to command the corps as he wants and he had already taken up an aggressive posture for his troops because the troops did not have sufficient ammunition, winter clothing. Maneksha also assigned the cause of the debacle to the poor state of arms, ammunition, clothing and the state of morale of the troops. Nehru gave him a negative for his aggressive posture, but his daughter Indira Gandhi intervened and requested Manak Shah to carry on so that the Chinese could know the difference in command. 
This could only happen because at that stage, though Indira Gandhi was not a minister, but she had a lot of influence in the political circles and was being groomed as a future leader at that time. During his tenure as the Corps Commander of the 4th Corps, Manek Shah improved the state of the clothing and also reached out to his men and improved the morale of the troops and properly adjusted the sighting of the posts and the companies in such a manner that the loopholes were plugged and the Chinese could not take any aggressive action in the NEFA sector. Thereafter, Maneksha was appointed as the army commander of the Western Command and then he was moved in 1964 from Shimla to Calcutta as the General Officer Commanding in Chief of the Eastern Command and he responded very nicely to the insurgency in Nagaland and controlled it to quite a level. For this he was awarded the Padma Bhushan in 1968. Then after General P.P. Kumar Mangalam retired as the Chief of Army Staff Manekshaw being the senior most army commander was appointed as the 8th chief of the Indian army though at that time the defense minister Sardar Swaran Singh liked Chal Harbaks but then Manekshaw being senior most took over as the chief then came the Indo-Pakistani war of 1971 which was sparked by the Bangladesh liberation war which was a conflict between the traditionally dominant West Pakistanis and the majority East Pakistanis. In 1970, East Pakistanis demanded autonomy for the state, recognition of their language, a bid to form their own government by the Awami League, which had a thumping victory, their own rights to be put in place, but then the Pakistani army quelled them down and rapes and murder were a glory. At that time, nearly tens of millions of refugees fled to West Bengal and adjacent Indian state. This was the time Mrs. Gandhi, who was the Prime Minister, decided that she should intervene and a new state of Bangladesh should be created. During a cabinet meeting, Mrs. Gandhi asked Manekshaw if he was prepared to go for war with Pakistan. To this, he replied that his armored and infantry divisions were deployed elsewhere and he did not have enough tanks which were combat ready. Also, the railways could not cope up by giving him breaks to move his tanks because the harvest season was on and the monsoons would be coming on and the fields would be boggy and his tanks would not be able to operate. So he should be given time to prepare and attack as per his requirement. During this period, Manekshaw geared up the complete Indian Army and it was prepared into a lean fighting machine. On 3rd of December 1971, the Pakistani Air Force bombed 11 of our airfields to which the Indian Air Force which was ready counter-attacked and drove them back and the Indo-Pak War of 71 was officially announced. This was a time when Manekshaw told the Chief of Staff Jal Jacob to inform the Prime Minister that he was going into East Pakistan. His only aim was to hold back the Pakistani army on the Western Front and in the Eastern Front to reach Dhaka. Plan was that the 2nd Corps commanded by General T.N. Rayana was to enter from the West. The 4th Corps 
commanded by General Sagat Singh to enter from the east and the 23rd Corps commanded by Lieutenant General Mohanlal Thappan was to enter from the north and the 101 communication zone area commanded by General Gurbak Singh was to provide the necessary support from the northeast. The strategy was well executed by the General Officer Commanding of the Eastern Command that is General J.S. Arora and they reached Dhaka and the war was over in 14 days and Niazi surrendered to the Indian Army. Mrs. Gandhi asked Maneksha to go and carry out the instrumentation of accession but then Maneksha said that it was the General Officer Commanding Eastern Command's honor and so General Arora signed the instrument of accession. There was an incident when he visited the 8 Gurkha Rifles and he asked one of the soldiers that did he know who was the chief of army staff? To this the soldier replied that his chief was Sam the Bahadur and thus he got the nickname. Chal Maneksha was a brave soldier but also very humane and the best quality in him was that he reached out to the soldiers, went to the fronts and met them personally. That is why he could gel with his men. After the war, he was to retire in June 1972, but his service was extended by six months and on the 1st of January 1973, he was appointed as the first field marshal of the Indian Army. Also, he was to be appointed as the Chief of Defence Staff, but there were resentments from the Naval Chief and the Air Force and the idea was dropped. And in 1972, he was awarded the Padma Bhibhushan by the President of India. Maneksha retired from active service on 15 January 1973 after a career of nearly four decades and he settled with his wife Silu in Kunur that is a civilian town next to the Wellington cantonment. Maneksha was appointed as the honorary general of the Nepalese army in 1972 and in 1977 he was awarded the order of Trishakti Pata and order of knighthood by King Virendra. After his retirement he served as company director on the board of directors for many a companies and was also chairman of many of them. He was outspoken and avoided political correctness. To this, he was to be replaced from one of the board of directors by a person called Naik at the behest of the government. To this, he jokingly replied that this is the first time that a Naik is dismissing a field marshal. It is said that he did not get his areas of a field marshal and it was President Abdul Kalam who got it sorted out and in 2007 he himself went down to Kunur and presented him a check of rupees 1.3 crores which was his areas of a field marshal. Maneksha died of complications from pneumonia at the military hospital in Wellington at 12.30 am on 27th June 2008 at the age of 94. He is survived by his wife Silu Bode and the couple had two daughters Sherry and Maya. In his honor, a poster stamp depicting Maneksha in the field marshal's uniform was released by the then President Pratibha Patel. The Maneksha Center is a multi-utility state-of-the-art convention center spread over 25 acres of landscaped area. It was inaugurated by the President of India on 21st August 2010. A flyover bridge in Ahmedabad's Sivranjani area was named after him in 2008 by the then Chief Minister of Gujarat Narendra Modi. In 2014, a granite statue was erected in his honour at Wellington. This is close to the Maneksha Bridge at Uti Kunur Road 
and also there is a statue of him in the Pune cantonment area. So ladies and gentlemen, you heard me talking about the first field marshal of the esteemed Indian Army. So to know more about our army and its related events and activities, stay tuned to this channel and also give us some ideas and comment on what else can we talk about. So please subscribe and share this channel. Jai Hind!